Yes. Um, I got to Glasgow, I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, poured a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. That sounds like some story about a fight where she had to go sounds like they were having like an out since she like just drove way off in the distance and slept in her car and then called her called him on the morning something like that how are you adapting to all of the the british slang and the localized words uh i, I i'm doing Pret i'm doing petrol and rubbish and torch no I, I, <laughs> torch I, I, is not a torch i did get used to that eventually they, they, it's they, a they, flashlight they, yeah they didn't they don't light a torch <laughs> and then <laughs> They've got this pitch back cell, black cellar, and they've got to like, like <laughs> ring it. Like they wrap, have like wall sconces. They wrap for... like an old t shirt around a stick and light it on fire. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> so they those, can see in the those people in, in <laughs> those people in Britain are a little bit behind us in technology, dude. They're still using torches over there. Yeah, that's some that's some it. that's some medieval shit. So see that in the car in that's Glasgow. weird though because he left after their fight. Did she also leave after? I think it's a fight? different fight. They've been fighting a lot. I think it's a story that's, about a different the, fight. The 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 popo are gonna say that's suspicious. There's a lot of Glasgow results actually. Hmm. But should we go? To, should we stay with phone or not? Phone's pretty vague though. Yeah. There's so many. Like every every one of those was about a different phone. But Glasgow. Let, let's got let's stick with Glasgow for now. Yeah. Okay, we have to figure out the hair if the hair is yeah. before or after. Which one's first? Um, what came first, the chicken or the egg? She ties what her hair a up silly over time. Query. This is twenty o'clock. This is twenty one. Yeah, this is eight minutes later. Is this clip? So this is eight minutes she sooner. Her, she had her hair dude, down. Dude, she did a really good job at tying her hair up in the middle of an interview. She braided it or whatever. I think. Did she? I think. I think it's just hanging over her. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> the true mystery. Like and I drive. I just kept driving north, just kept going, just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so tired. I just had to sleep. Weird amount of noise. <laughs> that, that was weird. <laughs> so yeah, she drove to Glasgow because she's wanted to fuck off. And she slept in her car. In the car. All right. Go to a hotel, lady. I'm trying to write, I'm trying to type or with my hands like around a microphone. Doop. The two microphone setup doesn't mix well with the uh, my keyboard placement. I'm sorry. I'm inconvenient. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has a really nice taste. That time, you must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. Yeah, but how do you prove that you like you, you didn't do anything noteworthy that anyone would have seen? You just drove out there and slept in your car. Good luck proving that. Yeah, that's not very helpful. But but okay, so a you're right. Her hair is not braided. Uh, B, a Diane S steel anniversary is that five years? I have, dude. I don't. I don't. I don't even understand why people do that. I don't either. But then why but does steel why does steel anniversary? Why did why would Eric give him a? Wait, you put the screen away. Uh, yeah, I clicked it when oh, you click okay. out of the oh, window. Huh. That's 11 years of marriage? That's specific. <laughs> Specifically, the 11th year of marriage is steel. Um, okay, I'll write that down. Weird. But, but why would Eric give him an anniversary gift for his wedding? Or for his... I feel like it's, that's a weird thing to do. Like, if do someone... If someone other people gifts for their anniversaries? I, I don't do that. I've never heard of anyone that's done that, but I wonder if that's a different custom. 
because I no no one really does the whole different um, anniversary thing here anyway. Like the 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 paper anniversary, the wood anniversary, the seal anniversary. Like I don't think people usually do that. But then I think it's weird to give like for a man to give another man a gift just to celebrate his anniversary. But that's just me. Um, I think that Diane is uh, Eric's wife because. Uh, Eric would have Diane pick out the watch, and that seems like something you'd have your wife do. Hmm. Could be it. Have we ever established who Eric is? Eric is, I think, well, I know Eric works with them, so I was assuming Eric's a co-worker, but they could, uh, they could also be, like, brothers or something, too. I thought Eric might be one of their siblings. Well, Eric might be his brother, but, too, but I know he's a co-worker for sure, because he owns the truck. Ah. Uh. And they, they go do jobs together. Maybe we'll have to Google Eric at some point. Uh, we gotta, and then maybe Diane. I've been infect. My brain's been infected by the word Google. A guggle? The, the? No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. Did yeah. Anyone, yeah. Did anyone see you? Did anyone see you? Bad alibi. That is a bad al alibi. How do you spell alibi? It's an I at the end. Oh, it is al- you're right, it is an eye at the end. Uh, why? You don't got no alibi, you ugly. Damn. That's hey. not how hey. alibis work. <laughs> you can't have an alibi, you're uggo. <laughs> What's your alibi for that? When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash. Just paintwork. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. But when I told him I was pregnant, you know, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. The hospital must have details when I was looked at. There's a scratch on the car. Hmm. Wait a minute. Better alibi. <laughs> I'm a little... That's a paper trail. Yeah. She got in a crash while she was pregnant without a license. So that, that, that all sounds like, oh, there's no paper trail. But then she goes to a hospital. But... Which is more helpful. Okay, so th this is a different... This is an, old, an older fight. But the thing is, is that she has baby stuff... Like how I don't, how long ago was this in relation to now? Yeah, it sounds like they're talking about a fight where they're pregnant with a baby, like the baby that they later, they later lose, maybe. Well, no, well, I think uh, yeah, if I think it is the same baby. I'm assuming it is, um, but the but that makes me feel like they're asking her about something that happened a really long time ago, and I'm questioning why they're asking her about that and why she would need an alibi for then if this murder just happened. Oh yeah, why would you need an alibi for then? Yeah. Hmm. Curious about hospital. Let's see if there's more for that. There is. Ask the hospital. <laughs> wow, thanks. That's a good one. That's my favorite one. I don't see how it's hard. We've established I was in Glasgow when he was killed. So it did have a long time ago. You spoke with the hospital? So he got killed. A wait, but wait, wait. I'm confused. Why would they have baby stuff? So he, she finds his body when they already have stuff from the baby that they lose. How could he have been killed that far back? Because those boxes had to exist. So she got pregnant again. Those boxes. It sounds like. I don't think so. I feel like that would be, like that'd be a fucking. They'd be throwing a wrench at us if they want us. To you expect us to figure out that there's two separate babies. Uh, it's a mystery. We can look up baby sometime. Yeah. Cause I... Yeah, we can look up baby. Cause, it, cause yeah, it definitely sounds... She just basically... She just said out, uh, just outright that he that he was killed when she was at the hospital, or at least that's their timeline that, that, the, that she's responding to. So she was pregnant when he was killed. Why does she have the boxes of baby stuff in front of his dead body? Those boxes had to exist before, like... Had to exist before his body yeah, was there. Well, yeah, they, they, I think they lost a baby, and there's like sad baby stuff that's all packed up away in the boxes in the basement where they, she doesn't want to go. 
And that's where the body was found. Yeah. For the but, husband. Yeah. But she has the baby still when he dies. That's but, a different baby. So so you do think it's two separate babies? Well, yeah, I'm saying that I'm saying that I th well cuz I don't think this game would do that to us. That well, seems cruel. They explicitly said that his body was behind a bunch of baby stuff, right? Yeah. And did they say it was sad baby stuff? Yeah. What was sad about it? Because well, they don't they don't they didn't say what happened to the baby yet, but they said that the reason she was looking at it was because the mother-in-law was talking about sad baby stuff. Yeah. Because the mom likes to linger on things. I kind of want to revisit that clip. The mother... Baby... Babbitt. <laughs> oh, no results for Babbitt. No. There's a long one. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Sam's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother said. She'd been speaking about old stuff. Sad stuff. About when we lived there. About the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed, and I never had the heart to throw out. And I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a torch and went straight to the back and that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open, saw the body. I screamed and that's when I called the police. Okay, so yeah, they lost a baby. So they have a bunch of nursery stuff about some baby that she never had to use but didn't have the heart to throw out. Yeah. So, so that, that establishes that they lost a baby, one where either because it never was born at all or because they lost it after it was born, but Well no no they wouldn't they would have used some of that stuff if I don't think the baby was ever born because they would have used it could be, yeah. Like at least one outfit or something, you know. Yeah. But then it sounds like she was pregnant again when he died because she got in a crash that where she was pregnant and taken to the hospital and that she specifically uses as an alibi for his, his murder. I just, I feel, <clears throat> I feel like I'm going to, like, I'm going to be kind of frustrated if there is two separate pregnancies. Cause I feel like that's, that's going to be, I don't see how you could interpret this without it having to. Yeah. Because, because the timeline doesn't make sense at all for the, those boxes to be there. Mm -hmm. Like he, those boxes, what she's saying would mean that those boxes were there after he was dead. But that doesn't make yeah. There's two babies. Any sense? But she was pregnant again during the during the death. That that's that's kind of a. We'll see if that's true or not. And apparently she had been down but there a be week before, where she noticed the boxes were in a different position. But she didn't do anything then. Which yeah. Is weird. But like her mom said something which made her think about the boxes, which made her realize that they were in the wrong spot. And so she went down to fix it. Or to investigate at least so what's going on. The body might have been there a week before she noticed it. It sounds like it's been there for at least a week, yeah. But then she says something about when they used to live there, which makes me think that it was her in law's house. She said, oh, like sad times when we used to live there. I don't know why she would say that. Like, I don't know why she would be in a house. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Five results for miscarriage. Oh, this is another new shirt, right? Yeah, that was showing up in the last result, too, for the baby. I think when I started, when I said baby a minute ago, I think these two were already there. Let's take a look at these. Yeah, so it is a miscarriage. No. I lost the baby. I didn't lose the baby. We carried on living at Simon's parents until... There we go. Yeah. That was only a few months after. This is an earlier... One of the earlier interviews, because we're back in June. So she had a miscarriage at eight months, and that's why they had baby stuff already, but none of it got used. 
and the, they were living at the in-laws house yeah. probably because that was like tragic for them and they were recovering emotionally or something or they might have just been still living there at the time that, of the pregnancy they just hadn't moved out yet yeah at eight months though he probably should then my parents died it was the worst year of my life the miscarriage, and then my parents. So her parents are dead. So, but that, that also means that that was like a long time ago, because that, that, that was already a whole year that had encapsulated, like, so it's not the current year. It would have been like a different, like last year or something. Uh, yeah. Because if you say that- She's that, talking about it being a, yeah, this is it being a past year. Yeah. Hmm. But we don't even know why any of this is relevant yet, to be honest. Mm mm. Yeah. I've begun to play feeling ill. I think it was flu or something. The neighbor called me. I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. And they'd been there for days. No one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage. The worst year of my life, and I've been so happy to get married. And after that, I was just like, "Fuck." So she got married. Whoa. What? 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 <laughs> you scared me. What? Our face is on the screen. <laughs> the screen, fl uh, a light flickered, and we got to see like the entire face of the person that we are. Oh damn! I missed it. Yeah, it'll, maybe it'll happen again. I'm this, you're no, like, what you, you scared me though. It, it was startling, there was a person. Was it a good looking face? Are we handsome? Uh, Are we horribly uh, we're, disfigured? We look disheveled. Oh. And kind of wide eyed. Well, that's not wrong. <laughs> that's how I look right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was infertile. Five, 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 five. Five, five fives. I was infertile after miscarriage because of complications. It's only one. That's only one. She was infertile. Yeah, so she... Did they get a egg implant? I don't know, but, but that makes me think it was one. That doesn't make sense. I was infertile. She thought she was. Oh. Thought I was. They told me I was infertile after miscarriage because of complications. Oh, there is two babies. <laughs> You're so dedicated to one baby. No, I, Even though I it think, makes no sense for there to be one baby. No, it, it does, but I feel like that's kind of a bullshit thing for the game to do. Like, nah, they, they can respect us and our I, ability to figure some basic shit out. Yeah, but that's like... That's just what a red that's herring... That's just kind of rude. The, you don't make a mystery without a red herring. Or like, a, or like, oh my god, there's two babies? And stuff like that. That's how you have reveals. These and are all different people. That's how you build preconceptions that are wrong. Is by by finding out like oh shit that detail fucks it all up. So you build this whole fucking timeline around the baby, and then you find the one thing that find, tells you there's two babies. But except we found it like immediately, so we don't yeah. even have to uh, fix anything. Hannah had a miscarriage. <gasps> Twins. This was late in the pregnancy, and I knew it. I was right about to say that. I was right about to say that, Keith. I was right about to say, watch them be different people. <laughs> but like the universe said. Corrected its course. Fuck. Whoa. You were aligned again. Fuck. But Hannah and Simon were still living with his parents. They were married. Simon had a job at the Glaciers now. Derek had given him a full time position after he left school. And then. I okay if you there I am. oh creepy, creepy oh that creepy. was that was more detail last time though if, if you guys if you guys listening oh if you roll it back no, I literally I heard, had no, said I heard that you you're like you're like watch them be different people watch them be different fucking it's like people. every single person but yeah okay I so, imagine you were joking like like every single person with the different shirts a completely different human being that all look the same but they really are identical twins I <laughs> now we have to unpack who the fuck is who okay so, so someone's married to Simon but somebody else isn't so okay okay I think that's Diane. Diane. Because Diane was mentioned earlier. If we Diane can, was mentioned, it could be Hannah. I wonder if we can his sister. If we look up Diane. Yeah, we need to look up. Diane. So, so Eric and Simon are probably in-laws, if that's the case, and that's why they're kind of like family, but not really. We. Uh, well, wow. she, she has a guitar in one of yeah, them. Yeah, I don't even know. But this should. Oh, there's five entries for Diane. This shit just got weird. 
This is neat. And they set you up to not be ready for that because they called it her story. But which her? Not like their story or whatever. <laughs> It's like a singular her. It's like nah. -uh. Well, well, that one, that one twin was like, oh, we're together. Like she lost a baby, and I'm happy about it because now yeah, we're like no, the same again. What, you know, she, that was a that was fucked up. Yeah. So maybe they both had miscarriages. So now then. we have an idea for why. What if it's the other? What if it's the twin that murdered him in her house? I was thinking that, so that too. She's gonna go down and find because that 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 would yeah. Almost to frame her or to fuck with her. I wonder if we weren't supposed to find this out so early. I have no idea. Or I wonder like how good we're doing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, worst case scenario, we just beat the game quicker. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you beat the game. I don't know if you can beat this game. I think I've heard that it just leaves you to your own uh, conclusions, and you just run out of stuff to investigate, and it might not have an ending. Oh yeah. Okay. So we might just have to come to our conclusion and be in kind of lay down our final timeline of what we think happened and then the comments will say what they think happened and we'll just all experience this together Aww. and then we can all watch a fucking theory video this is a theory game theory well Eric was like an uncle to him they were pretty close they spend a lot of time with each other an uncle especially when they have to go to conferences have you met his wife Diane no no Eric's married to Diane but you wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't refer to it as yeah. his wife, Diane, if you if it was your sister. Yeah, so no, no. So Diane's just another character. Yeah. But Diane comes up a couple of times, which is interesting. Diane is really nice. She helps out with the glaciers, organizes the Christmas party, that sort of thing. They have two kids, really sweet kids. She used to look out for me when I worked there. When I worked there. She doesn't work there anymore. I'm just going to Google Glaziers now because it's bothering me. <laughs> it might be a... Uh, There's a union, apparently. Glaziers. A tradesman responsible for cutting, installing, or removing glass. Okay, Makes sense. So that is the glass guy. Makes sense. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So Diane's really nice, and Eric's like an uncle to him. I'm guessing Simon. Yeah. I'm not really... He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come over for dinner. That would be us returning the favor. Diane is a really good cook, into her trendy ingredients. And the last time Simon cooked something off Master Chef, he got the recipe off Seafax, and I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? I like fennel. I don't know what fennel is. Have you ever eaten fennel? Achievement unlocked. <laughs> I got an achievement for that. For fennel. I think this is like a weird... I, I think that achievement cements the idea that that particular clip is just like a... It's completely useless. It's just a fun, cute clip that's in there. Yeah. Uh, Character building. This one's fucking guitar. Like Fennel's good. Fennel's like a... It looks like a, a bulb. Like a... Um, and it's got leafy bits on top. Oh, I, I recognize this plant. Um, it's the white bulb with a bunch of yeah. Uh, your your brother makes really good fennel. It's recognizable. I don't know. I'd eat it. I'm not afraid of no plants. Guitar. What's up with this guitar? Are <laughs> Simon and Eric arguing? No, I can't imagine they'd be arguing. And they get on so well. Unless it was something to do with work. Maybe Simon was being too much of a perfectionist. But I don't know. You should ask Diane. You should ask Diane. So I think Simon and Eric were arguing. So Eric is like an uncle to Simon. Yeah, we don't know if they have any actual relationship. No, they work together. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, not... I, mean, uh, I don't know if they have any family relationship at all. Probably I don't, not. I don't think they do. There's an age gap. Because you wouldn't say someone was like a family, or like an uncle to someone, yeah. if they actually were any member of their actual family. You'd say, he, he, he is... He was his dad, but he was more like an uncle. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't really there a lot. <laughs> yeah. Fennel. <laughs> Fennel's hell... I want some fennel now. I want some fennel. I want some fennel. I want some fennel. Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> just type, just fucking Hail Mary. Let's see, which thread do we want to follow on? Um, 
Okay, so... Body? Or Simon, uh, Eric? Or some entries on Eric. Well, there's only two we haven't seen here. Yeah, I might as well just poke at him. He was wearing um, a shirt. Oh, was he? Wow. With a blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch. It's a really nice one. That was a gift from his boss, Eric. It's his boss. Mm. Okay. He had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, black pants and bear. <laughs> Uh, he would have taken that with him. It's not in the house. We'll have to watch Paddington at some point. It's, it's so relentlessly wholesome. <laughs> relentlessly wholesome. Yeah, specifically with Paddington, the character is just incredibly wholesome. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a visa, a silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so he usually pays with cash. But That's me. Eric convinced him to get one. I'm afraid of debt. <laughs> oh, that's good. People had to convince me to get a, a credit card so I could start building credit. Because yeah, that's, the, that's the game you that, gotta that's, play. That's the main purpose. Because the smart thing is just to never, ever, ever, ever take any loan if you can avoid it. It's really out of fear. It's really dumb that, <clears throat> that our, just, our world works this way. Yeah, they have to like pretend oh money and then pay it off immediately to like to prove that you can pay things off. Yeah, because they don't have anything else to go on, I guess. Um, I I uh, was dating a a car salesman, just that was fun. Got another boss one. Um, oh, and he was saying it's long all staticky. One. It's a long one. He was saying that you should have several lines of credit open to get approved for a car. Like you should have like three or four. And I'm like, that seems Damn. irresponsible to have that many credit cards. But apparently, that's actually what they like better is having more credit cards. I was gonna say a lot of people just get their first car from their parents in some way. No, no, the three or four cards. Oh, credit cards. They said they said in order to get a card. Oh, in car. order to get a car. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say a lot of people don't really get approved for their first car because they just get some sort of thing from their parents or like some kind of like. <clears throat> it's, I don't know. I got a VW. Uh, did your parents buy your car? Yeah. Or, or like I think some people even might like. Maybe be some cases where people technically pay for their own car, but like they get it through their parents or something instead of like dealing with the whole. Trying to get through into there, the, getting your foot in. Well, a lot of people get their hand-me-down parents' cars. Oh yeah, or weird junkers that they just find. Yeah. There's a long ass clip. Let's watch. A whole minute and a half. I don't know how we'll ever make it. Uh oh. Oh no. no. Okay. Um, I parked up on the street. It was busy, so I parked down the end of the road. I walked up to the house. I knocked on the door. No answer. I took my keys out of my bag, unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. I could tell because the key wouldn't turn when I tried to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes on the shoe rack. Um, I shouted out for him. I walked straight into the kitchen. He usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. He wasn't there. I touched the kettle. It was cold. Um, I looked quickly into the living room. Nothing. I walked upstairs to the bedroom, he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. And then I had a shower. Whilst I was in the shower, the phone rang. I think it was Eric, his boss. I didn't answer it. Then I came out and I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, but I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. I spoke to him. Then I called Simon's parents. And then I decided to come see you. That enough? So was that the day where she was trying to see if he came home or not? Yeah. And so she could like come home from work or whatever. It seems weird because I feel like she said something. She basically already said... She said almost word for word the like, same thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, not not like, like this the, was a, this is like the detailed account of like the night though. Probably, it, it was, probably, it's they're more probably detailed. asking her to be more detailed. Uh, yeah. Well, and that's also, why she's like, is that enough for you? But also, I don't think she was dressed that way. So I think they're asking her on a different night to see if she can recreate the same timeline. Mm. And like they're checking, they ask the same question on different days to see if her story changes. Her story, huh? <laughs> but the. Uh, 
really specific. Uh, some stuff stands out to me that's amusing. It's like, oh yeah, it's the '90s. So when somebody called the phone and she didn't pick up, nobody knows what it was because she doesn't like. Now that we're on cell phones, you know your entire yeah. call history. Like you can ignore twelve calls and you know what all of them are. But back then, somebody rang, if somebody rang your your corded phone and didn't leave a message, you have no fucking clue what it was if you didn't check. I kind of prefer that. Yeah, there's a good old days. It was kind of nice growing up in a decade where you could just be unreachable for a few hours and no one no one would have an aneurysm out. yeah yeah whereas like a lot of people are just tied to their phones because like people can access them right now so they will and if you don't get back to them then it's like you're ignoring me <laughs> why are you ignoring me uh which is definitely a thing yeah it's like, it is. <laughs> sorry mom i was driving oh dude my i had, my... I had a two-hour drive and i don't check my phone when i drive yeah, so, I don't either. Yeah, my dad calls me. He's like the only person that calls me. But every time he does, I always think something terrible happened because no one calls me to like. Yeah, but he'll just call like to ask something casual. But I always think like somebody like some terrible thing happened. I'm like, Dad, is everything okay? And he's like, Oh yeah, yeah. I just want to see if you want to get lunch this week. I'm like, Dad, just text me. Yeah, phones. <laughs> don't scare me. I'm a little on edge about phone calls, but my no, my mom will just randomly call me in the afternoon like three times a week. Just because she's on her drive home and just wants to talk. Oh, well, that's that's cute. So I'm I'm used to just phone calls being normal at this point, but uh, I she gets ignored a lot because I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> I'll get I'll call her later when she's home already. Because like I I was in the middle of an episode. I can't just stop when you feel like it. But so, so sometimes she catches me though. No, I think your audience would love that. I think you should just, actively just have just... a call phone call with my mom yeah. in the middle of an episode. <laughs> <laughs> just was was that one of those things you say? It's like. Uh, I was trying to think of one of those moments for like on, on on a movie or whatever or a show where somebody answers the phone and is like, "Welcome, Cheryl. You're on Dateline or whatever the hell." <laughs> like you're just like on the show. Uh, you're on. Who wants to you're be a millionaire? <laughs> you're someone's lifeline. Answer yeah. this question. This is. I've actually watched a few shows where. Uh, like a few let's players or podcasters where they'll like answer the phone and just make the person uncomfortable to like shame them for calling them in the middle of their work day. <laughs> they'll, they'll just be, they'll just like commit like, hey, yeah, no, how's it going? Yeah, you're on the show. How's yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you you want to go? Bye. <laughs> Inconsiderate prick. Yeah, let's see. Um, we could put like a detailed account or. Uh her story. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, those kinds of words. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. I was just googling boss. So that little aside about the phone ringing is the whole reason <clears throat> that that clip came up about Eric the boss calling. Oh, how about look up sister? Oh yeah, sister. 50 message no three four messages there's the guitar again why would she bring her guitar in <laughs> maybe she, she she both sisters why is there a guitar because she's a little crazy did she invent a in. fake sister <laughs> to, to throw everybody off i don't know man <laughs> but see that's that's what makes sense because the baby timeline you want me to play something well i'm not the world's greatest guitar player okay probably needs tuning How about a traditional ballad? Hey there, Delilah. <laughs> there were two sisters came walking by the sea. i 
And it gets really weird. Um, well, that seemed uh, that seemed kind telling. of telling. Yeah, yeah. It's well, a song about murdering your sister. Yeah, and then being jealous over your sister's man. The murder sister song. <laughs> but, but apparently, we got an achievement for that. So yeah. that almost makes me think that it wasn't important. The traditional ballad. It might just be that they're like special, memorable clips. Mm. And that's it. Uh, <laughs> the Bridger Sister song. Is it just me or the oh the dreadful wind and rain like throw off the timing of the second line? Like Wait. every time she said oh the wind and rain, it like flowed, and every time she had to stop to say oh the dread the dreadful wind and rain, it felt like too long of a line each time. Yeah, it was like bothering me for some reason. Well, she said she's not the, was weird. not the greatest guitar player. Yeah. Key. Question is, is that a song? In yeah, universe, I was gonna or look. Or is it a song she can I, wrote? Can I, I'm gonna look at that really. You're looking yeah, at we, really we quick. We can just Google it right now. I was, uh, I was, I was gonna do that. Yeah. Oh, the wind and rain. It, it auto completed. The wind and rain. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, Jerry Garcia from the. Um, that's a fucking. Fuck. That's a. Uh, Grateful Dead song, then. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, the wind and the rain. Jerry Garcia, although maybe Jerry Garcia is just covering it. But it says traditional. Were, yeah, traditional. Music. Or, oh, yeah, music and words are both by traditional. So maybe it's. Here, there's a band called Traditional, or I'm guessing it's just like an older. Oh, so it's, it's like an it's, older, like. Like Mary yeah. Had a Little Lamb type shit. Yeah. It's just like an ancient. Wait, wait, how does phrasing. he. How does he. Weird. Wait, he so he so makes a fiddle bow of her long yellow hair. Let's see. Oh no, it's just, it's still, the words are different. Yeah, they are. There are two sisters that came walking down the stream. The one behind pushed the other one in. Johnny gave the youngest a gay gold ring. Didn't give the oldest one anything. They pushed her into the river to drown and watched her as she floated down. Floated till she came to Miller's Pond. Mama, oh father, there swims a, a swan. I think that I think that the swan came up in the other one too. Yeah. The the Miller pushed her out with a fishing hook, drew that fair maid from the brook. He let her on the banks to dry, and a fiddlin' fool came passing by. Out of the woods came a fitter fair. Took thirty strands of her long yellow hair. And made a fiddle bow of her young, long yellow hair, and made a fiddle bow with her young, long yellow hair. He made fiddle pegs with her long finger bones, and made fiddle pegs with her long finger bones. He made a little fiddle with her breast bone, the sound could melt a heart of stone. The only tune that fiddle would play was Oh, the Wind and Rain. So the song's the perpetuated only, forever. Yeah. Um, the... So it was a fiddle that would only play that song about her murder, and yeah, they made an instrument out of her body. That's where it gets weird, by the way. <laughs> There's a Junji Ito story like yeah. that, with so, the person that has the harp in their chest. That's what she means when she said it gets weird. It's like it starts out with just a murder, but then it's like, then they made an instrument out of her remains, and then that's only would fucked. sing the song of her murder. <laughs> Yeah, it, like it, like it, like it makes them confess, so they have to <laughs> go to it's jail. Like a Junji Ito thing, or like a Telltale Heart. Yeah, so yeah, it looks like a Jerry Garcia just did an acoustic cover of that song. Yeah. So it's not the um, Grateful Dead necessarily, but well, if you ever want to listen to it, look up the Jerry Garcia acoustic cover. Yeah, that was a fun detail. That was, but that was really ominous. So yeah, no, and she did, she did change the words a little bit. Yeah, to be a lot more about a, a fisherman. So it's the theme song. <laughs> 